Hello YouTube. In this video, I'm going to show you how to actually configure the manually configure the hard drive when doing a clean install of Linux. This one we're going to do in Ubuntu 15.10, 64-bit version, since it's one of the more popular distributions for home use in Linux. This is set up with a it's a virtual machine set up with a dual core. CPU 4 gig of RAM it has a 20 gig primary drive and then a 26 gig secondary drive that secondary drive is not only going to be the swap partition but it's also going to be the home partition and you can set you can actually set a lot of your different folder mount points to uh, various drives and separate it out across different hard drives or you can throw it all under one hard drive so the easiest way to do this, let's start up the VM. The easiest way to do this is to make sure for if you're using uh, platter style mechanical drives instead of solid states. The easiest way to do this is to set up your primary drive as the main OS drive. And then if you want to separate out your home folder so that way it's all on a separate drive. It's also an extremely bright idea to separate out your swap file so that way the swap partition is on a separate hard drive as well this gives you a bit of a performance increase and in boost because the system is constantly writing to that swap partition and if you do it this way um, you won't have it writing and reading to the primary drive and the operating system and all those files while also trying to maintain the swap partition on the same drive so does give you a bit of a performance boost doing it this way the same trick works in windows as well it's always a wise idea if you have a secondary hard drive to put your active swap area on the secondary hard drive and not the primary on a solid state drive those things are fast enough there's really no performance increase uh, you don't have the problem with the mechanical head, so it's nowhere near as bad. So, you're going to click Install Ubuntu. And we'll go ahead and hit Download Updates while installing and install this third-party software. Click Continue. Now this time, whenever it comes up asking about the drive, instead of erase entire disk and install Ubuntu, we're going to select something else. Click Continue. Here's the two hard drives. So we're going to write new partition tables to both of these. Once you create the new partition table, it's all going to be free space. So click on the add button. Beginning of this space, ext4 journal filing system. So our mount point for this is going to be slash. You see that you can set it slash boot slash home. If you have a really small drive, you can set it as slash boot, where all the boot files and stuff go in for booting the system. Then you have slash home, slash temp, slash user, slash var, slash SRV, uh, slash OPT, slash user local. So, I mean, there's, there's a lot of different mount points that you can set it to. We're going to set the primary one to root, which is just forward slash. Click OK. And now we're going to come down here and click New Partition Table. Click Continue. You're going to see this all is free space. So now we're going to hit Add. And we're going to want to make the first part of this the swap area. And the easiest way to figure up exactly what the uh, this one's going to be six six gig. There's uh, four gig to the system. The standard is you want to go one and a half times the size and swap file is what you have in physical RAM. So it's going to be six gig total for the swap file. And to figure that out, you're going to hit six times one zero two four. There's one thousand twenty four megabytes to a gigabyte. Just like there's one thousand twenty four kilobytes to a megabyte. Hit equals, it's going to be 6144. Click OK. 
Now we have our swap area and with the rest of the free space we can click add and we're going to mount this as slash home. This is going to be a logical drive instead of a primary. The primary drive needs to be the root folder. These on the secondary drive can both be logical drives. Once you get it all set, it'll max itself out at the maximum amount it can use. Click OK. And there you have it. It is now partitioned out and ready for the operating system to be installed. So click install now. Now it's going to tell you how it's going to set it up. Click continue. Now we need to set our time zone. I'm in central, so Chicago works just fine. Click continue. Click continue. Now it's time to put in for the name. Again, you always want to make sure that you set this first password up as a good password because this is going to be your super user. As you can see, it says install as super user at the top. So make sure this is a strong password. And make sure require my password to log in is selected. If you set it up to log in automatically, any physical security you might have is gone. It's thrown out the window. If you want it to log in automatically, you're more, more than welcome to select that option. I, on the other hand, do not recommend it. Alright, and once the install is finished, hit restart now. It's going to tell you that you need to take out the installation media that's normal. It should automatically kick out the DVD drive, and all you have to do is take the disc out. In this particular case, with it being a virtual machine, it'll automatically unmount the ISO image. If you're using a USB drive, at this particular point when it tells you that you need to remove it, you remove the USB drive rather than a DVD. Now you need to sign in and you can see Ubuntu boots right up. You'll notice that it actually performs a little better. Everything loads a little faster and whenever you pull it up and look at your home, here's your home folder. That is not on the primary OS drive. It is on its own separate hard drive. And as you can see, it by itself has 20 gig. Everything else will dynamically allocate itself under that mounted partition and you're good to go. So all your downloads and everything will dump under here. Uh, anything you move over to your home folder, all your personal files and everything will all dump under here. And if you encrypt it, it'll encrypt just that part and it's not under the main OS drive or anything else. It is separated by itself. This is a good way to make sure any of your personal files and stuff uh, are separated from the main system. And there's a lot of different things you can do in this aspect. Uh, I will have a later video that will show you if you already have an installed OS how to add a hard drive and then mount the home uh, set it up to where you have the home folder and everything mounted to that partition by itself on a separate drive and then if you add another hard drive how to add that into an existing home partition so this one's just for doing the manual configuration on the hard drive to do a clean install this information's out there for absolutely everybody as always watch like and share have yourselves a great day